Hello everyone. This is Roslyn Douglas, a founder of Central Health Grenada. Central Health is a grassroots initiative which seeks to educate nationals about chronic non-communicable diseases. But in light of COVID-19, we're continuing our online series entitled COVID-19 and those most at risk. And so today we wanted to get into a discussion about what does asymptomatic mean? And I'm pleased to have with us today, Dr. Taryn Holston. He is attached to Fit for Life Medical Services, which is located in Grand Anne, St. George's. And he is the medical director. Dr. Holston, welcome and thanks for joining us today. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me here. Well, I brought you in because I wanted to get an expert to explain to us what does asymptomatic mean? We've heard through the media and various educational opportunities about how COVID is spread. You can get it if you have it and not know it to someone else. While you have it, you can give it to someone. And then we also know that even when you're starting to recover, you may still be able to spread it. But at the same time, we just wanted to get a, a clear understanding and from you, what does asymptomatic mean in light of COVID-19? Okay, so Ms. Douglas, um, asymptomatic, we can basically break that word down into two parts, a and symptomatic. So asymptomatic simply means not showing symptoms of a particular disease, okay? So you may have a disease, but it may be one in a phase that it's not showing any symptoms. And one of the things we need to understand is that um, that does not mean that you're not suffering from the disease. It simply means that maybe, uh, remember, everyone is, has um, different genetic makeup and so, and respond differently to diseases. So you would find that some people may show florid signs and symptoms, meaning that classical symptoms associated in the case of the SARS COVID-19 and in, in the case of that particular um, strain of virus, we hear some common symptoms that have been actually um, discovered like fever, cough, and these other type of uh, symptoms being more common and as a result of that, the patients that have been discovered have been patients, really the majority, I should say, of patients discovered have been patients who have had um, these symptoms. And by way of physical examination, they would have, the doctors would have discovered signs. And by way of investigation, they would have discovered, well, that patient is positive. Okay? Uh -huh. However, we can have the dumps at the flip side of this story whereby patient goes around everyday life, may not feel any way, but lo and behold, probably as an incidental finding because they have to return to work or they may have to um, do some tests and they decide to do a COVID test and it shows up as positive. Mm. Now this would sort of surprise that person and surprise many others because you may think, well, what happened? The patient has the disease, but it's not showing any symptoms or the patient doesn't feel any way, doesn't mm. feel feverish, does, is not coughing, isn't having a runny nose, doesn't have shortness of breath. So such a patient falls into that category as an asymptomatic patient. A patient of that sort, um, needs to adhere to the protocols likewise because the patient has the same possibility of transmitting the, the disease because as we know it's a very highly contagious disease and it's up there with other things like the, the flu that we know of and other, other diseases. It wouldn't be as contagious as measles but it has been considered up to this point more contagious than the, the regular flu. So in the absence of symptoms, in the absence of fever, cough, you can still transmit that disease. Wow. Okay, so that is basically what an asymptomatic um, patient 
really what what it really mean okay. what can you maybe explain the benefits then of all of us following the guidelines that have been provided by the Ministry of Health, which is to you know, wash our hands when we're out in public or in crowded places to make sure that we're wearing a mask. What would be the benefit then? What is the logic then of that advice in light of what you said? Good. So I just wanted to add before um, discussing that part, that you know that the, the whole issue of being asymptomatic, um, there is a kind of loose terminology that is used. Sometimes people see such patients as carriers of the uh, disease. So it's like you're a carrier, but you're not, you're not basically ill yourself, you know? Okay. Um, this is a, a more dangerous situation, you know, in the sense that you you don't know that you have the pathology, so you kind of let down your guard a bit more. You you can be, I would consider you to be a greater at a greater risk of transmission because you're not quarantining yourself because you don't know, right? So you may let down your guard. So this is where your question comes in. This is the, this is why we need to adhere to the, the protocols, one and all, right? You may not have had symptoms of the disease. You may not have taken a test. But what we have to do basically is consider that everyone is affected until proven otherwise. Good, because if we do it the other way, like, no, I'm not feeling any symptoms, I'm okay, and you let down your guard, it simply means that you could be a carrier of the pathology, you could be... Um, an asymptomatic uh, patient, COVID patient, and basically you could be unknowingly transmitting because you um, touch your face, touch your nostrils, the droplets falls out, gets onto these high touch surfaces, your phone, your countertop, your doorbell, etc. Then you have that being able to stay there for at least 24 hours others touch it and there you go, you, you're transmitting it. So these protocols, even so I would say, um, should be reinforced even more because basically we know that once patients show florid symptoms and they've been diagnosed, you know there is, they're basically quarantined and so. An asymptomatic patient may not have even been in the system so far less to have had contract, uh, contact tracing done. So that could be a situation that, that could be potentially dangerous, right? As compared to a disease where 100% of the disease manifests itself, right? With all of the, the florid signs and symptoms, cough, shortness of breath, etc. In a case like that, you know what to look for. Everyone looks for that sign and that group of sign and symptoms, right? So in that case, you sort of, you can manage uh, such a disease better as compared to cases where there is a portion that shows signs and symptoms and there's also a portion that is literally asymptomatic. So there is what you call occult morbidity where you have the existence of the disease but it's, it goes undiagnosed. So it's an occult path. And that occult path is what can be very, very detrimental to the healthcare system because that's the path that can have the secret transmission if we were to put it out. It seems that we really do need to be aware and, and continue more so even now based on what you're saying to practice those recommendations given. Is that correct? I sincerely think that you've nailed it in a nutshell. It's very correct. And what I think we can do, I think actually what you're doing now is really important. You know, sometimes we would have a presentation and not understand the repercussions, but really and truly what you're doing can is sort of like a clarion call because everyone is thinking COVID-19, cough, shortness of breath. We have gone past the asymptomatic we have forgotten about that. 
if we push more of the asymptomatic, the knowledge of that, basically people would sort of understand, you know what, um, it's, it could be here and I don't even know. Yeah. Right? So it could be anywhere. So basically at every moment of the day, uh, every time you stick to your protocols without letting down your guard. It could be your aunt, your uncle, it could be, it could be anywhere. And it could be from anyone without even showing signs, right? Yes. So I think if we push that a little bit more, we may, we may be able to, to sort of control the, the, the spread a, a lot more because then you're not just looking now for who has cough and cold, you know? When the pandemic just started, you had everyone, they're going around, you hear a cough and everyone ducks, you know? Right. It, it's no longer that. You have to take into consideration the large um, uh, group of undiagnosed patients because they're asymptomatic, right? As I said, you can loosely refer to it like they carry the disease, but they're not showing the signs of it. Well, Dr. Taryn Holston of Fit for Life Medical Services, I certainly appreciate you taking the time to explain this to us. It's, I think it's important that we do push it uh, for Central Health Grenada. Our focus is on educating the public about chronic non-communicable diseases, but we do know that persons who have an underlying condition, if they're exposed to this particular virus, they tend to have a really rough time. And so the discussion about what asymptomatic means is clearly a timely discussion that needs to be pushed more. And so I thank you for sharing that information with us today. Okay, soldiers. COVID, please leave us alone. COVID, please leave us alone. All of us are staying home. All of us are staying home. I know you want to see us dead. I know you want to see us dead. We're staying home so you won't spread. We're staying home so you won't spread.